Okay, everyone, welcome to All Colors Are Beautiful. It's a talk about an interactive light art installation. Uh, there will be about 10 minutes at the end for questions. Uh, the people speaking today are Franz Pletz and Leela Fish. Hi. Um, we're here today to tell you about our art project we did in the summer. Um, FPLATS is here to tell you about the software. I myself know some about the hardware. And during this talk, we want to tell you some stories about what happened, tell you um, what is behind the screen. And we hope to inspire you for your own art installation someday. So, um, we are from Munich, from the Munich uh, CCC. Um, we are founded in 1999 and we have over 80 members uh, without the support of um, our club uh, in Munich, uh, this wouldn't have been possible, so we have to mention it, of course. Um, yeah, we have a web page, but the wiki is more uh, up to date, so look at the wiki about our projects. For example, we are doing, um, we are going into schools to teach children about privacy uh, and Facebook, social network and, and, and so on. We have some hardware projects, software projects. Just look at our homepage for that. Yeah, and we mentioned the club because almost everyone or many people there are involved in the project. It all started out with the mood lamp, which we have around there for some years now. We have lamps in our uh, hacker space actually, and you can put, turn the lights on and put them in any color you want with your mobile phone over the internet. And the mood lamp is a, an RGB LED, which is the, controlled by an Atmega. And so with this lamp in the background, which we've had for a while and which almost everyone has at home in our hacker space, because it's very versatile and you can control it with different protocols. We came across the building Puerto Gising. It's an old um, office building and a supermarket downstairs. It was used during this summer by artists in Munich before it's going to be torn down sometime next year, probably. We were offered to do something in there and with lots of windows and the blink lights installation in the back of your head which you might remember, they had a talk two years ago and uh, the projects are pretty well known. They transform buildings into black and white displays. We thought, yeah, let's do this, but in color. Sounds very simple, but the problems already started inside the building. Something you really don't expect. 
Of course, to get to the windows, we had to open some doors. Most of them had keys, some didn't have keys. So we tried something new or practiced something we already knew. We got in at some point, um, we had to open the key, uh, we had to take out the whole lock. So the lamp was there, but it wasn't perfect yet. It um, was for private use. Um, and for this large building with lots of lamps in it, we had to make some adjustments. We had components for multiple protocols, which we all took off because it's way too expensive if you want to buy 100 lamps or if you want to make 100 lamps. We also didn't want to have a special power supply for each lamp, so we changed to higher voltage and put a switching regulator in, so we had a lower supply cu current and could supply more lamps with just one power supply. And on the old lamps, we had screw terminals, which was really horrible. When we built the 3C here, some of us really got crazy because the contacts are very bad with the screw terminals and it's lots of hard work. Instead, we put in <coughs> Ethernet connectors, which we hope would be more stable while they're stable. They're very easy to put up because you just plug in the Ethernet cables, but we found out they're not as stable as we hoped. But it works somehow. Yeah, and these lamps are hand soldiered by us. About these lamps, I already told you, it's a microcontroller over PBM. Um, it controls the RGB LEDs and the protocol call, um, it speaks as RS485. They are supplied by 24 volt, and the switching regulator put, um, switches this to 5 volts. As I told you, uh, <clears throat> we want very few power supplies. Our power supplies can supply 16 lamps. In Puerto Gising, we had 24 lamps in every line of windows, so we had to use two power supplies. Here we have 16, so one is exactly enough. And we don't want to have extra trouble with the data, so we just put it all into one cable. The data needs two conductor pairs and the rest is for power supply. And there's one in between because I told you we need two power supplies and they need to be separated. So there's one lamp in between, that's why it's blue. It just transports the data. And the hard thing is with the bad connections, if one connection doesn't work, you can't say which one it is. You have to go through the whole line and try every one, every one of the lamps. We hope on our installation here that it's a bit more stable and we don't have to tear everything down. So we have these beautiful lamps and we have RS485 to tell them when to go on and which color to do. <clears throat> and they need to find this out somehow. So we have master PCBs for each line. There's one PCB which translates from USB to RS485 and it gets the USB from a laptop in Puerto <clears throat> You can see how it really looked. So there's a simple schematic, but actually it's a laptop lying around in some room with lots of stuff lying around and the Ethernet cables were coming just from the room. They were cut off. They were the house cables and when the house was left, they just cut off everything and we just found out which one is going to which line. So it looks very different than one, than one would think. Yeah. And RS485, I should maybe explain, it's a versatile communication standard. It was already used by the lamps, so this was practical for us. And it can connect several devices in a bus structure, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Okay, on to the software. Um, here you can see a little schematic about all the components uh, we have developed. Um, for our project, um, we didn't use any blinking light software um, because it wasn't really fit for our purpose, but we can import uh, blinking lights XML files, for example. So we are 
yeah, compatible to, to Blinken Lights formats and Blinken Lights tools. Um, basically, uh, at the top, we have a wrapper editor called ACAPAD, which writes to the database. Uh, we have a spooler, a queuing manager called ACAP spool, uh, which then transfers the animations to GigaGoyle, which is um, basically a display driver for the hardware. And um, GigaGoyle also outputs uh, all um, the frames, uh, which is sent to the hardware to a player, um, which you can use to watch it. Um, to get into the details, uh, yeah, big slide, uh, many text, but <laughs> um, so we have the uh, ACAP ad, which is the web editor, which you have already seen in our little trailer. Um, it's written in Python with uh, Django and a uh, lot of a really lot of JavaScript uh, with MooTools as framework. Um, we have uh, our spooler, which is actually a little Python script, which is doing the queuing uh, and the streaming. Uh, it's also written uh, yeah, in Python um, and basically, uh, yeah, creates a database for animations, selects a random animation, or if there's someone who wants to stream animations, lets him stream or not, based on some conditions. Uh, then we have uh, streaming clients. Uh, we have um, um, a Python library, which you can use uh, also here at uh, our Congress um, to uh, yeah, write your uh, games, animations um, for our little wall. Uh, then we have an ACA player, which is a live viewer, which uh, um, talks to GigaGoyle. Uh, it's, written, it's written as in C and SDL for, yeah, kind of historic reasons. Um, and then you have GigaGoyle, which is the display driver which directly talks to the hardware over a serial bus over a USB. It's written in, in poor C and gets the raw animations uh, from the spooler and just puts them on the screen and also gets the timing right if it's not um, direct streaming uh, but an animation with uh, fixed uh, durations for the frames. So now a little demonstration of our web editor. It works, yeah. We've already customized it uh, for our installation here because here we have um, six rows and uh, 16 columns, whereas in Portuguese we had four rows and 24, 24 columns. So it's basically a wrap app. You can just paint your animations here. Uh, here you can switch the color. Pretty easy enough. On the left you have uh, tools, for example, to fill a frame with uh, a color. Or some other more intelligent tools if we make here a, a new frame and just paint some stuff. Sorry. Just paint some stuff. We have, for example, the Game of Life tool, which just <laughs> does Game of Life on the screen. <laughs> or more sensible tools like the Move tool, um, some tools um, to flip the screen. Uh, what's really nice, uh, a gradient, for example, like that. Um, so you can really, really colorful and really flashy animations. Uh, and the uh, bottom of the uh, paint tools, we have uh, frame tools to duplicate the frame, make a new frame, copy frame, paste frame, easy enough. On the right, we can um, edit the frame duration uh, in milliseconds, so it's uh, how long the frame should be displayed, and title, description, author, if you want. It's also movie duration, um, which is uh, put in seconds where you can define how long the animation should run. So if you have not enough frames, um, the movie or the animation would just loop until uh, it reaches your duration. Yeah, so much for the editor. You can also, that's the really important thing, uh, save your movie. You just click on here. And yeah, you have to fill on the damn fields. And it got saved. You can also download the animation in the Blinking Lights movie format and upload animations in the Blinking Lights XML movie format. So if you have legacy animations, just upload them. Yeah.
Back to demonstration. Yeah, good. So we've told you about the software, about the hardware. This is what it really looks like from the inside. This is inside the building we were working in the summer. We put some transparent paper into the windows because else you would just see very bright dots and this works for the windows to be a smooth color. And you see the software working with the hardware. We are adjusting a lamp which doesn't do what it's supposed to do. And yeah, it's a very nice look from the inside. And someone is just telling the lamp to be blue, I guess. Because that was the bad contact problem. And some other things that happened. So we were very, very happy in the evening or in the middle of the night because we just put up the last lamps and we hacked together some code to just to do every line to fade to a random color and each, each window after the next to change its color to this random color. What happened looks really nice and I'll just show you. Okay, so we expected the whole picture to, to just change its color in the left and run in this direction. Instead, the first and the third row are working together and the second and the fourth row are working together. This is <clears throat> because we didn't communicate, right? Some of us thought we start with the lowest ID on the right, inside, and some of us thought we start on the right, outside. <laughs> Yeah, but luckily we had the software and we just fixed this in software. <laughs> and then we forgot about it. So <laughs> yesterday we put up our installation here. <laughs> had the ideal IDs perfectly right and the same thing happened again. <laughs> So at some point we remembered, but nice nod. Another nice thing, uh, we had a company uh, which donated us a terminal, a touch terminal with a touch, touch screen. Um, so we uh, put the terminal outside sometimes when we were there. So um, passersby could create uh, animations on the touch screen with our web editor and yeah, could instantly see the animation on the screen, which they just created, which was very nice. Um, you could also uh, trigger an animation by sending an SMS or text message. You just had to text play and the idea of the animation, which you got when you uh, saved the animation, you got a message with the ID. Uh, you just sent the text and the next animation that would be uh, played would be your animation. And of course, the SMS was free. Uh, we didn't, uh, it was just a normal handy lying around, uh, plugged to a computer with a SIM card inside, so just a normal um, mobile phone number. Um, also, um, we um, um, tried to implement uh, direct streaming um, at first, but we didn't, um, yeah, we didn't succeed at first, so. Uh, the code was active and while the code was active but not working properly, another group called Aquarium came along and uh, wrote Blaptris, which is a Tetris game on uh, our building. And they just uh, run it basically on the building and we didn't know about it. But uh, the, <laughs> the problem was it was working. Uh, I didn't expect that it would be working but it but it worked. The problem was that um, Gigagol, display driver, um, just locked up if they disconnected. So after they played, um, the whole installation was broken. <laughs> yeah, a little fail. <laughs> but it was nice that they independently developed it. Uh, they just looked at the source code, uh, understood it, and just hacked up their Tetris clone. <laughs> we also have a video of that, and maybe they are here, and we can also play Tetris on our uh, Akka wall uh, outside. Uh, one moment. Yeah, that's Tetris playing on Fertogiesing.
live. One second, you see, <laughs> there's the laptop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's really difficult with just four lines to play Tetris. <laughs> yeah. I just have to say this. <laughs> Um, so here at the Congress, uh, we have rebuilt our installation with plastic boxes instead of windows. Uh, you may already have seen it uh, in B01. And, uh, here we have six rows uh, with uh, 16 boxes. Uh, we did that because this makes text possible, because uh, with only four rows of pixels, you just can't display text. There's no font that's small enough uh, so that you can recognize the um, yeah, the letters. So that was a problem in our original installation, which we fixed here by adding two extra rows. Uh, here we have uh, six buses, and every bus has uh, 16 lamps that are powered by just one power supply unit. That's exactly how much uh, it can support. And you can play with it. Um, we <laughs> it's just an IP right now. But uh, we will get a domain name soon. Um, we tried the whole day to get a domain name, uh, .congress.cc.de or something, but we didn't get it. So um, here's the IP. You can look in the wiki. Um, we have a website there called All Colors Are Beautiful, where you can look up the current IP or host name if you got it. Yeah, and uh, you can also code games visualizations. We have a uh, yeah, kind of rewritten uh, module for that, which de Iggy developed. Where is Iggy? He wants to present it. <laughs> um, yeah. Hello, everybody. I'm Iggy. I'm very tired. Um, <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, didn't have much time uh, to, to help with uh, the uh, All Colors Are Beautiful installation in, in Munich the first time, um, but I really liked the, the possibilities to, to play with it interactive um, with, the, with the small Python scripts and the, uh, what the uh, team Aquarium did with the, with the Tetris client. And um, yeah, so I wanted for the, for the Congress, I wanted to provide a way so that anyone has a mostly easy uh, opportunity to uh, bring live content to the to the screen and yeah i i had uh, my plans were a little bit different i hoped that we would be uh, finished way earlier like yesterday evening and i would have the whole uh, day today to clean up the code and make this nice uh, i didn't do that i we fixed tons of strange bugs uh, in the installation so that now it is running in a nice functional, minimal, minimal state, and the streaming library is working. Uh, and I can show you, why does it, okay. Um, this is the uh, library itself. It uh, has a little, has a few, um, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to, to, to you use this stuff um, and you can read it and you can understand it why it works that way but the um, I will show you in a moment how you can call it and that's really easy and really nice I think but I again yeah we have some some basic stuff to make a connection to to call uh, to talk to the uh, giga uh, to the ACAP spooler um, we have frames we have colors we have uh, mask we, we can move around and what we do is uh, no, that's not the right one um, yeah, I have to really have to clean up this repository. Yeah, basically that's that's what we, what you do. Um, you subclass a stream which has a title and an author. Um, you define a method that init's a frame, like defines what the first frame is. This one is a frame that, uh, that will be played for uh, one thousand milliseconds, so for one seconds. It, it's of color. Uh, 25500, so that's uh, red, and you, re you return that frame, and uh, the other function you have to define is next frame, which uh, yeah provides the last frame as an, as an argument, so you can use that to construct your next frame, and yeah, you also have to return a frame in, 
in this case, we take the last frame and invert it so that uh, the frame will be filled with uh, 0, 255, 255, which is kind of cyan blue. And uh, in the end, you just uh, create your blinking stream and run it. And yeah, then it will play on the, on the screen. It will not immediately play on the screen to prevent uh, the guys in the hack center uh, spamming the B01 area with epilepsy inducing red green hectic blinking. Um, there is a touch screen terminal standing behind the, the installation and every time somebody makes a stream request, uh, uh, buttons pop up allow and deny and you can select allow or deny and then the stream will be played or it will be not played and if it is played there is an abort button so while it plays you can abort it uh, if you don't like the hectic red green blinking. <laughs> um, that's mostly it about the library. I think um, people having experience with Python can dive in right away and fix my gross mistakes and stuff I forgot and uh, yeah, improve it, and uh, I hope that I will will come uh, will have the time to write some more stuff, write some documentation for it, so it's really easy to use it. But it works, and have fun with it. It's out there. Fork it and make push and pull requests and whatever the git way is to do this. Um, yeah, and we will handle it somehow. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Iggy. Now, what we have is the software and the hardware. The software is made to be very versatile, so we can map any LAMP IDs and we can just put them in any order we want and in any size of a matrix we want. And so we can make any kind of display we like and then are fast to adjust the software, Akab Ed and Gigagoy. And we hope when you do your own stuff that you make it easy for us or yourself to change the format of your applications because then it will be used again probably. So the software is there for anyone. The hardware, we have 100 lamps available right now and we have over 100 pl plastic boxes standing out there. We're already having plans to use them outside. I mean, there's a camp coming up and many ideas how to use the boxes outside. The design for the hardware is available and there are many ideas around how to improve, especially the plug connections, the ethernet connections. So this is what we have. You can use the hardware designs, you can use the software, but there's a lot of other stuff important. First thing is the finances. This was not so easy. We were very spontaneous, of course, and that's not good. You should start really early with the project. We had the big luck to get support from the CCC. They have a project support, which you can ask for, and maybe you get some money. We got some money landed from them. We also try to get from different municipal sources money. That's important to try different sources because if one says no, maybe some other one will say yes. Uh, the town of Munich finally, finally said yes when the installation was all finished and everything, but we could give back the CCC its money and um, could cover all, most of our hardware costs. Um, yeah, it's supported by the, what is it, art, cultural reference, uh, cultural reference referent for art. And also, yeah, so you see we were waiting for different sources of money and it was getting very tight with the timing and we got this great idea to just ask people who are interested because so many people told us, yes, this is great, do this. And we said, okay, you can support us, you can just help us to buy one lamp. So in the end, we can have a whole display and we got a lamp godfather, that's how we called them, for every lamp. 
Is anyone of the godfathers here? Or godmothers? I don't know. One. Uh. Yay. <laughs> okay. I've... So you can look at this picture and try to find your window because what we gave them um, back is they could choose a color for the window and this color would be shown sometimes in between. This is the colors they chose and it's also to be seen on the web page and they have some link and some lines and a picture I think. So they saved us really because um, they gave us the money to get started and with the other money we could buy other stuff because what you shouldn't forget is not only the electronics are expensive. When you buy, I don't know, 100 screws and lots of transparent paper, this is also quite a bill to pay. And you have to drive around and stuff. And so we did everything for free, but we got at least the materials. And to get this, you should start early. I just repeat this again. Then another thing, I just told you we were very spontaneous. Don't underestimate lead times for components. We were really worried to get enough Atmegas before starting the project. We were soldering for about two weeks. We were putting the stuff in the house for about two weeks and we had lots of people helping us. We had people coming to us and just helping for an hour or helping for a week. And so after about four weeks, just working time, not developing the lamp, not thinking about concepts, we had the whole thing standing. And what was done anyways in between was the developing. You should leave time for that. What you see here is, for example, an idea how to stop the colors of the lamp to shine over to the next window. We threw this away in the end because it's very time expensive and has little use only. But it's good to have time for these experiments. And for example, look at this wonderful construction to put the lamp in position with most inexpensive and most normal materials. Um, very inventive. Um, so our last slide, um, how you contact us. Um, while you're here uh, at the Congress, uh, you can drop by at our IRC channel, uh, ACAP at ray.blafasel.de. Um, yeah, it's the Blafasel nets, it's what we use in Unix. Um, we have a web page, acap.muc.ccc.de, uh, where you get more information about our installation at Puerto Giesing, uh, also our address of the Munich CCC, some email addresses, and of course the code. It's on github.com slash mucc. Uh, yeah, play with it and have fun. And thanks for your attention. <laughs> So in the end, I just or we just want to thank all the people who were involved in this project, wherever they were, whatever job they did. And we are not the ones who did this because there's a large group who did this all together. Everyone put in ideas and it was lots of people involved. Thank you. Thank you. So if anybody has any questions for them, um, I'll come bring the mic to you. Uh, actually, can you come out here and we'll meet up? <laughs> uh, the Munich installation was about uh, 100 lights, 100 lamps. Uh, so what was the total cost of everything, the lamps and everything, the power supplies, what have you? Okay, that's a bit of a difficult question because we can't really say this. We used some stuff from our lab just because we had it and private people put stuff in. Um, I just can say we wanted about 23 euros from the um, godfathers of the pixels. That is exactly the price for the electronics. That is exactly the material that is used just for one lamp. Everything in between, I don't know how much are hundred land cables, cables and paper. I can't really say the number. Yeah, it's 
the 2,000 from the city were used up in the end. Anybody else? Raise your hand. Okay, it doesn't look like there's any more questions. So uh, thank you again. That was really wonderful.